Welcome to Unit 1, R Concepts. This unit will strengthen your understanding of R and make sure that you have the necessary R skills to perform exploratory data analysis and data visualization with R. Here's a list of all the lessons that make up this unit. The first lesson is on the R working directory. Here are the learning outcomes, that is, things that you'll be able to verifiably perform after completing this lesson. Right? So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to install R and use R Studio. You should be able to explain what is this concept of a working directory and why we set the working directory. And of course, you should be able to set the working directory for a single session of R usage, as well as set the default working directory which will be the working directory for you across sessions. That is, you use R, you shut down R, restart R, and when you restart R, the working directory should automatically be set to whatever it is that you set here. Okay, And then finally, you should be able to diagnose and fix this specific problem that arises quite often, no such file or directory error. So these are all the things that you ought to be able to do at the end of this lesson. Okay, to install R in R Studio, here are the links. You can follow these links and install them. And of course, by now, uh, I'm quite sure all of you have installed R Studio already. Okay, let's look at the concept of the R working directory. No doubt, you have all used R a little bit and you have issued commands that look like this. So here we are saying that, and we've got the assignment operator, the less than dash. This is the assignment operator in R. And here we've got a function read.csv, right? In other words, this function, you already know, tells R to read a CSV file, comma separated variable formatted file. And here within parentheses, we have given the function argument as the name of the file that we want the system to use. We want R to read, okay? So the file name is some file.csv. So it's just a comma separated variable file, okay? So of course you understand that, uh, when you do this, you're asking R to read a file. But of course, we all know from using computers that files live within directories or within folders, right? So obvious question is, in which folder should R be looking for this particular file that we are asking it to read, right? So in which folder should R try to look for this file? So that's the important point, okay? So one thing we could do, of course, is be very explicit about where R is supposed to be looking for this file. So for example, on Windows, we could say read.csv and then we could specify the complete path to the file. In other words, we are saying within the C drive, within the users directory, within KV directory, within the courses directory, there is a file called some file.csv read that file, right? So here we are telling the system exactly how to find the file. That's one option, uh, but of course, it's extremely tedious to have to go and spell this out every time. Okay, uh, the above command, as you already know, reads a file and stores the result in a variable called dat. Dat is just a variable whose name we have a good deal of freedom to choose. Okay, and you already know this. So instead of doing this, which is tedious, uh, we have an option to say, well, you tell R, whenever I'm looking for a file, please look in this particular directory. Okay, and we do that by setting the working directory, right? So the working directory is nothing but the default place, default directory or default folder where we are asking R to look for any files that we reference. Okay, so once you set it, you can then say that is read.csv, some file.csv, and R is because we've told R to look here, and shortly we'll see how we can tell R to do this. R is going to look in this particular place and find the file, assuming the file is already there. So how do you set the working directory? Well, look in our studio, go to the bottom right pane. This area it represents the bottom right pane. Within that, go to the files tab and then navigate to the directory that contains the file you're interested in, right? So wherever it is, just go through the file system, navigate, Incidentally, to go to a parent directory, you click on the two dots that you see here. That will take you to the parent directory of a given directory. 
And if you want to get into a particular directory, just double click in the name of the directory that will go into the directory. Okay. And then once you have reached the appropriate directory, just drop down the uh, options on the more button and select set as working directory. Okay. So this, what this is doing is setting the working directory for the current R session. Okay. So you're using R for the current session. This is going to be set as a working directory. Okay. Now, once you exit R and come back, then this will no more be the working directory. Okay, so clearly, uh, most likely, what you will want to do is to set R, uh, the R working directory for all your sessions for the entire course, right? So you're going to put all your data files in a particular place, not just data files, even code files in a particular place and set that as the permanent working directory. Okay, so we'll shortly see how to do that. Okay, so this is what it is. You navigate to the required directory or folder and use this option. And this will remain in effect for uh, the current session or until changed. Okay. Alternately, you can actually set the working directory by issuing a command. You can call the function set wd and within that, within double quotes, you supply the full path to the directory that contains your file. So in this case, I've just given c colon backslash users backslash kb backslash courses. And within that particular folder, all my data files are going to reside. Okay. We really don't have to do this. Uh, because we can do it easily with our studio and of course you have to assume you have to make sure that the name that you're providing here is the name of a folder and not the name of a file right because you're setting the working directory it's got to be a folder that contains other files okay now once you have set the working directory you can always verify that it got set correctly by going to the console console happens to be the bottom left pane in our studio so go to the console and then the console will show you the working directory. Okay. The tilde is what it'll it's typically it'll start with. The tilde represents your home directory and then followed by all the rest of the things. So you can verify that the working directory was indeed set correctly. Okay. So that that is always decided there. Okay. So one thing that you will commonly see uh, when your working directory is not correctly set is the following error. So, error. so for example, I say that is read.csv some file.csv. Okay. And then I get this big error message that R is spewing out on me. It says error in file, blah, 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 cannot open the connection. In addition, warning message in file RT, etc. Now, this is a common characteristic that when you're using R, you will get error messages that you don't fully understand. There's nothing wrong with this. Okay. That is because in R, you call a function, that function calls some function, that function calls some function. So the error message is actually originating from some function, which is deep down in the system, whose uh, details we really cannot hope to understand at all. However, whenever you see an error message, don't just throw your hands up uh, and ask for help because 90% of the time, the error message contains something that will give us a hint of what went wrong. In this case, that hint is coming here. It says cannot open file some file.csv. No such file or directory. Right? So what it's telling you is there is no such file called some file.csv. Now you may be sure the file is there. I just created it. I just copied it. And I can see it right here. You know, I open uh, an explorer, a Windows Explorer or a Mac Finder and there is a file. So why isn't it saying that there is no such file or directory? The only reason, uh, there are a couple of reasons why it might be saying this. The most common reason is the file is there, but it's not in the current working directory. Because after all, R is looking in your working directory. Okay. And it's unable to find the file in the working directory. So it's saying, look, I'm not able to find the file. Right. That is because you didn't give the full path to the file here. You gave only the name of the file, telling the system, go use the working directory. It used the working directory, but the file, unfortunately, was not in the working directory. So it's saying it's not there. As simple as that. Okay. So you can diagnose errors by looking a little carefully at error messages and focusing only on the part of the error message that you're able to understand. Okay. So R is unable to find the file you're asking it to read. Probable cause is what I said. It's not in the current working directory. 
Solution, of course, is set the working directory correctly to point to the directory that contains this file and reissue the command. That will solve the problem. Okay. Now, the next thing that could happen is you verify that the working directory is actually correct. Then why is it not able to read the file? There's something going wrong with R, right? Obviously, in that case, the problem is most likely that you didn't spell the file name correctly, right? After all, uh, it's a computer, doesn't have a brain of its own. So it's simply going to look for a file whose name you specified. Now, if you specified the file name incorrectly, then obviously it's not going to be able to find it. Okay, so those are the two things you need to look out for whenever you get this error. Another very common mistake that happens, which is related to working directories, is something like this. Consider that you have a, a folder structure that looks something like this, right? So you've got C colon, that's your uh, root directory. And within C colon, you've got a directory called users. Under that, you've got some uh, directories for specific users. Okay, so let's say this is you. And within, you've got a directory called data. And within that directory called data, you've got a file called some file.csv. Okay, so this is what you have. Now, let's say you set the working directory to user slash kv, right? That is, you set the working directory here. Okay, and then you are thinking it should be able to find this file because kv contains data. Data contains some file.csv. So some file.csv is in this particular folder, is in the working directory. Okay, that won't work because when you say something is a working directory, R expects files to be present in that directory, not in any subdirectory of that directory, right? So in this scenario, you will get an error message. And I've seen many of my students making this mistake, okay? And uh, they, you should not be doing this, right? So if you do this, you're going to get an error message because some file.csv is not directly in the working directory. So make sure either you change the working directory to this directory, which is data, or you take this file and put it under that directory. You have to do one of the two things because R is going to look in that specific working directory. So till now, we have looked at how we can set the working directory for a session, which is temporary. Now, what if you want to set the working directory that will last across sessions? In other words, I exit R, I come back into R, and the working directory setting is still the same. Okay, so there's a way to do that. And to do that, within your R environment, go to the Tools menu. There is a menu whose name is Tools. And within that, there is another option called Global Options. Okay, so Global Options is under the Tools menu. So once you do that, it'll open up in this window. And within that window, by default, it should open to the General tab. Otherwise, go to the General tab. And within the General tab, you see here, Default Working Directory when not in a project. Okay, so do take a look at that. And then there you can click the browse button and then navigate to whatever you want to be the working directory and then click OK or apply and that working directory will be set. But one thing you must note is as soon as you set that as the working directory, R will not immediately change to that as the working directory because this setting takes effect only when you start R. Okay, so even if you set the working directory this way, if you want to use files that actually contain live in that particular directory, you will either have to again set the working directory for the session or just exit R and then come back into R, then this is going to take effect. Okay, so you have to be careful about that. So this is the caution that I have given you so far. Okay, so when a command specifies the complete path to a file, then R does not look in the working directory. Right? So R is going to go and look in the working directory only if you just give the file name, right? Or if you give a relative path, but let's not worry about relative paths for now, right? So usually you'll either give the full path or you'll give uh, just the file name. If you give just the file name, then R is going to use the working directory. If you give a complete path, then R is not going to look at the working directory, right? So for in this example, this gives the complete path and therefore, R is just going to use the complete path. You've given the complete path. It doesn't need any more information. It can go and find it. Whereas uh, in a different case here, when you don't give the complete path, you give only the file name, then R is going to 
uh, look for this file in the working directory. That completes this lesson. So what are the takeaways from this lesson? The first thing we learned was that the working directory setting tells R where to look for files if a particular command does not explicitly specify the location. So that's one important thing about where the working directory setting comes into play. Second, of course, is that we can set the working directory either locally or globally. By locally, we mean we set the working directory only for a particular session. And when we exit R and come back, that setting is no more valid. Or you can set it globally, in which case, every time you shut down R and you restart R, it's going to point to the same place. So that's an important thing to understand and know how it works. Finally, we understand that we must put the requisite resources in the working directory and not put it in any subdirectory of the working directory and expect R to find it.